Hi Mavis, it's Nana again and I have another story to share with you today. This one is from a book called Why? The best ever question and answer book about nature, science, and the world around you. I'm also thinking today of reading not only to you Mavis, but to Penny and Lily. In any case, this is a book that was written by me, your Nana, Catherine Ripley, and illustrated by, oh, such a talented artist, Scott Ritchie. Scott and I have worked together on a number of my books, six of which are inside this one big book called Why. So today, I'm going to read to you from one of those chapters or books and it's called Why is Soap So Slippery? So let's let's start. Here we go. So this book is from Why and it's I'm reading it today with the permission of Scott who's the illustrator I told you about him and also Al Kids who's the publisher. Now, when I first worked on the six chapters of the, this book, or six separate books, I am so grateful to have worked with two very talented editors, Sheba Maland and Kat Montesunu. They were great and helped make the book what it is today. So here we go. From why, we're going to look at why is soap so slippery. The book starts off with a scene you're probably familiar with. Right? What does that look like? Looks like bedtime, doesn't it? And sure enough, this family is getting ready for bedtime by having baths and cleaning up in the bathroom first. So the dad goes, next, and who's in line? Looks like the baby, someone younger than you, has already had their bath. And the little boy is standing there and he's saying, where's my rubber duck? Oh, do you see the rubber duck? I think you found it. The first question we're going to look at today is how can hot and cold water run out of the same tap? Surprise! Inside the faucet, behind the wall, there are two pipes. One pipe brings hot water from the hot water tank, and the other pipe brings cold water directly from your neighborhood water supply. When you turn the tap, you let hot or cold water run into the faucet. Turn the tap a little and a trickle of water flows through. Turn the tap a lot and the water gushes out. If you let cold and hot water into the faucet at the same time, the water from the two pipes mix together so that the so warm water runs out. That sounds like a good thing to have in your bath, warm water. Not hot and not really cold either. Oh, before the boy's gonna have his bath, he's going to brush his teeth. And he says, why do I have to brush my teeth? What's that all about? Oh, I see the rubber duck is brushing his teeth too. Got a nice shiny smile. Well, inside your mouth are lots of living, tiny, tiny things called bacteria. And when you don't brush, food sticks to your teeth and the bacteria eat the sugars in your food. And as they do, they let out a waste that's full of acid, strong enough to melt the hard outer coating of your teeth. Then, uh-oh! The acid makes holes. These holes are called cavities. 
By brushing your teeth, you get rid of the sugars that the bacteria like to eat. And if that bacteria have nothing to eat, then there's no acid to make cavities or holes in your teeth. That's why you brush. Oh, the little boy says, sitting on the toilet, look at him. He goes, why do I have to go to the bathroom anyway? And the simple answer to that is to get rid of the leftovers. As you chew and swallow, your teeth and stomach turn, say, see the apple, into a soupy mush. The apple mush travels through your body, becoming thinner and thinner, and some of it flows into your small intestine. Here we go, see the small intestine and into your blood and all around to feed your different body parts, your fingers and your toesies. But you know what? There are always some leftovers. The leftover food mush in your large intestine. See, that's, that's over here, the large intestine. Become solid waste. Your kidneys take the watery leftovers out of your blood and send the liquid waste to your bladder. And to get rid of all these leftovers, you go to the bathroom. And so your food becomes waste and then goes out of your body, the parts that your body can't use. Imagine that. Well, as you know, when you sit on the toilet and you go to the bathroom, then you have to get rid of that, right? So the next question somebody asked me was, where does it go when I flush? That's a good question, eh? Well, it goes down and out. Whoosh! The toilet water travels down a pipe from your toilet through a pipe in your house. See, there it is, through a pipe in your house. And then out to a bigger pipe. And if you live in a city, which you do, the water flows into an even bigger pipe. There it is, under the ground and under the street. And it flows into even bigger and bigger pipes onto a water treatment plant, which is up here, where the toilet water is cleaned up. In the country, where your daddy grew up on a farm, the pipe outside your house might carry the water into an underground septic tank, which is like a mini water treatment plant right in your backyard. Okay, brushed his teeth, gone to the bathroom, and now, look, finally gets to be in the bathtub. And he said, thinking, animals don't have bathtubs, so how do they stay clean? And the answer is, all in all sorts of ways. Believe it or not, zebras roll around in the dirt to get clean. It's old skin and bugs they need to clean off. Chimps, chimpanzees, have a friend pick out the bugs and dirt from their hair, while cats use their tongues to lick themselves clean. Rhinos, do you see a rhino in there in the picture? There's a rhinoceros. Yeah. Depend on the help of a special bird. See the bird sitting on top of the rhino? The bird gets to have a meal of the pesky bugs it finds on the rhino's hide or skin. And elephants, where is the elephant there? Do you see him? Where is he? There he is. There's the elephant. Shower or bathe in dust or in water, but without the soap. Okay, what's next? And then a big question from lots of kids. See, all these questions came from real kids just like you, Mavis, and Penny, and Lily. Why is soap so slippery? Oh my goodness, why is that? It's fun though, isn't it? 
The answer is, the simple answer is, all the better to clean you. Like all things, soap is made up of millions and millions of molecules, which are tiny pieces so small you can't see them without a microscope. When the soap gets wet, mod water, <laughs> when the soap gets wet, water molecules free up the soap molecules so they can slip and slide around. You see, there's the water molecule and the soap. They slip easily onto your skin. Join with the dirt. There it is, joining with the dirt and slide the dirt right off your body, leaving you clean as a whistle. Let's see what's next. I bet you've had this happen. Ow! Oh, why do some shampoos sting my eyes? It's not very fun, is it? Look at, and the duck doesn't look very happy either. Isn't that a great picture? <laughs> anyway, here's the answer. Why do some shampoos sting my eyes? Because they are like the tears in your eyes. They are not like the tears in your eyes. When shampoo gets in your eyes, your eyes feel the difference right away. They send a stinging message to your brain. Oh, help! Something strange is in here. To get rid of the strange stuff, the brain tells your eyes right away to make more tears and wash the shampoo away. And that would be true of like dirt and stuff like that as well in your eye. Some shampoos, however, are specially made to be as much like the water in your eyes as possible. These tearless shampoos fool your eyes and don't sting. You know what happens when you've been in the bathtub for a long time, playing and having fun? Getting your eyes stung by having a shampoo that is not tearless? What happens to your fingers? Do you know? They get all wrinkled, don't they? And so somebody asked me, why do my fingers get so wrinkled in the tub? They get too naked. <laughs> your skin is covered by a thin, thin coat of oil. And when you are in the bath for a long, long time, the coat of oil is washed away. The bath water can then seep under your naked skin, making it swell up and wrinkle. On the palms of your hands and the soles of your feet, the skin is thicker. And where there's more skin to, on these places, they make really big wrinkles. There we go. I think the bath is over for the little boy. Shall we see what happens next? He's getting out of the tub. Look at, do you see? Oh, there we go. And he says, why does the floor feel colder than the bath mat? You try that the next time you have a bath. Put one foot on the bath mat and one foot on the floor and see if the floor feels colder. Why does the floor feel colder? Because the heat is leaving your feet. The hard, smooth, tile floor becomes feels colder because it's carrying the heat away from your feet. The more the heat flows out of your feet, the colder they feel. The soft, fuzzy bath mat feels warmer because the spaces between the fuzz hold the heat and don't pull it away from your feet as quickly as the tile floor does. And so, the bath mat feels warm and the floor feels cold. Oh, more fun to be had. Why can I draw on the mirror? What's he drawing a picture of? Do you see? He's drawing a picture of himself and the duck. <laughs> that duck is still there with us. But why can you draw on the mirror? Well, because the air is full of water. You usually can't see the water in the warm, wet air from your bath or shower. 
That's because the water is in, an, in its invisible form called water vapor. But when the water vapor lands on something colder than itself, like a mirror, it turns back into tiny drops of water. The drops make a thin layer covering the mirror and making it seem white like a piece of paper. When you draw with your finger, it breaks the film apart to show the mirror underneath. Ta-da! A picture. Whoop! I think the dad, daddy is draining the drain, the water out of the tub. And the little boy says, why is there a funny noise when the water drains away? Have you ever heard that? <laughs> And the simple answer is because the drain pipe is like an upside down drinking straw. That's pretty weird. You think about sucking on a straw, you make an empty space called a vacuum inside the straw when you do that. When you get to the bottom of the glass, there isn't enough juice left to fill the space. Air rushes up the straw to help fill the space up. The juice and air slosh together and make a lot of noise. That's just what happens when the last drops of water and air do when they rush down the drain pipe. Well, he's had his bath. I think he's getting all dried up. And then he, I see, isn't that great? He's helping mom and dad by hanging up his towel. And he says, how do the towels get dry by morning? Because usually they are dry in the morning, aren't they? And the answer is because a drying towel is like a slowly boiling kettle. Because if you boil water in a kettle long enough, all the water will disappear. That's because the water turns into water vapor and leaves the kettle dry and empty. In the same way, if you leave a wet towel in a dry spot long enough, the water in the towel slowly changes into water vapor. Little by little, the invisible water vapor floats into the air and away from the towel until the towel is finally dry. Of course, we can't really, that's supposed to be invisible. You can't really see that happening. But I thought Scott did a good job of showing us what that might look like if we could see it. Okay, oh, and now the little boy has finished his bath. He looks tired like he's going to go to bed. And look who's coming into the bathroom now. Older sister, finally, she says, baby's had a bath, little brother's had a bath, and it's finally my turn. And that is the end of the book that was originally called Why is Soap So Slippery? And it's found in Why. But look what I found. I found some cool little facts here at the end of the book. Let's see what they, they are about. Did you know this one's about a duck? Ducks do more than clean when they preen or run their beaks through their, fe their feathers through their beaks. Their beaks ca carry oil from a gland at the bottom of their bodies and spread it. They use their beaks to spread it all over their bodies and this, they waterproof their feathers. Oh, what's this dresser of drawers got to do with bath time? Can you imagine disguising a bathtub as a tall set of dresser drawers? That's what some people did long ago to hide the bathtub in the bedroom. Why did they hide it in the bedroom? Because bathrooms hadn't been invented yet. Oh, what about this? When you blow a soap bubble, see if you can do that next time you have a bath. When you blow a soap bubble, you fill a thin soap and water skin with enough air to make it float away. And finally, ah, 
We're going to end with a dinosaur. Stop. Before you fill that glass to rinse your teeth, think about the fact that a dinosaur may have drunk that very same water millions and millions of years ago. The water on the earth is used over and over and over again. And now that's really the end. And I'm going to say, love you, Mavis. Bye.